Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I have a ton of stuff to get done. Yesterday, my daughter and I went to the co-op. These three buckets here have fertilizer in them. One is urea, one is MAP, which is mono ammonium phosphate, and the third one has potassium in it. Those are more for the trees I'll be planting pretty soon. And throughout the year, I mix my own fertilizers. And I have like trace, trace elements and a bunch of other stuff over there. But I have to restock every spring. This, the pelletized gypsum, goes all over the place around here uh, on the lawn. But this specifically is going to go near where the trees go. I got 12 trees coming this week. And I also found these pretty cool straps that I'll be using to strap up the trees. We have high winds here, so... When you plant a tree, you absolutely have to strap it for a year or more, depending on how well it roots the first year. But I have a bunch of other fertilizer and all that other stuff that needs to go to the greenhouse. I have these legs and those brackets need to go to the greenhouse. We have a rain day tomorrow, so I'm going to assemble the benches and transplant a bunch of the plants tomorrow while it's raining. So I'm going to get everything over there and staged, get ready for that. I also have to cut the boards over there for the cross bucks for these uh, sawhorses. I have to transplant whatever plants I can find that have come up over in that toilet garden because that area is going to be bulldozed for the shop. So those are going to go into the front ditch garden. We got a lot of lupine in there, which is my wife's favorite. They say you can't transplant it, but I've done it before. So we'll see. It has a taproot, so it does anything with a taproot doesn't like its taproot cut. Okay, and my wife is going to take down the the horse fence along the top of the ridge right there by the big walnut so I can burn that area. Then I got a, a little mantis tiller. I'm going to till the very end of it over here and I'm going to plant prairie smoke there. I'll talk more about that later. Okay, and then where is it? That big apple tree in the pasture is suckering like crazy. I gotta do a little bit of pruning on that right away. Good morning, horses. Don't want to talk about it. I have some glyphosate premixed, which needs to be sprayed behind the house in the prairie restoration. So the list I have is contingent on my daughter having track tonight, but they canceled the meet, so I'm going to try to work until dark and add some more stuff to the list because time is running short. We have two buildings going up this year, and the greenhouse has to come down and get moved. Everything that's in the greenhouse get, has to get planted. I have to start you know, several hundred, well, probably close to a thousand uh, grass seedlings in the greenhouse before it gets taken down. So I've got a ton of work to do this spring, so let's get at it.
Okay, I got my stuff shifted around. I needed this stuff, the brackets and the legs and all that stuff over here. So when it rains tomorrow, I'll be ready. I, st I still need a few things, the driver, um, nut driver for this, um, miscellaneous, but I'll get that later today. What I need is, I'm going to have benches that are only this wide, sawhorses that are this wide, and it's going to have three 2x4s across the top, 8 feet long, two of those in here, and I, I think I want two outside as well, so I can quickly move the plants outside. But that will fit if I have... It'll be 20 some inches wide. That'll be able to fit the flats this way and fit a bunch of them on there. This next planting is all grasses and I'm hoping they do better than some of these. I got to turn this heat off. It got down into the low 40s last night, so I didn't want to shock these too much. It kind of looks like some of these butterfly weed are going to make it. A couple here and there. The rest are so iffy. I, I just really don't know. But anyways, I'm transplanting this stuff tomorrow. I'm going to be, when it rains, I'm going to make these benches and then get what I can transplanted. So I don't think a lot of this stuff is going to live, but we'll give it a shot. It looks like this one and this one may, are possibly the only um, purple milkweed that are going to make it. I'm really going to have to study up on these for next year and see what their requirements are. Maybe they got burned by the lights. Oh, I, I know they got burned by the lights, but they should have recuperated. But everything else is doing just fine. The June grass, like I said, I got, that's getting planted by seed, you know, in the prairie back here. So anything that's started in the greenhouse here will be going into the front ditch gardens out there. Yeah, it looks like only going to get a few of these. This grows wild around here, sky blue aster, so I may transplant some local stuff into the ditch gardens. Uh, wavy hair grass, one of them, if that's what that is. I actually went and ordered five three inch pots of it last night from, what is it, Prairie Moon, I think. So I'll have six, if that's what that is. I'll be able to tell when they get here. So if that's what that is, I'll have six and I'll plant a cluster over where they're going and get seed from them and do it again next year. It'll warm up in here really quick now, now that the sun's fully up. Yeah, these really need to get transplanted as well. So tomorrow is going to be a, a bunch of transplanting. And then down here with, with the purple... Uh, or not purple, this is, everything else seems to be purple. This is the wild lupine. It's just, it's on its way out. So again, I'm going to have to read up on this. I, I've never had a problem growing it from seed in the garden. I have lupine all over the place here that I'm going to try to transplant today. Get that into the front ditches because this whole area is going to be cut out for the uh, wood shop is going to be right here. So now that I have everything moved over here, I'm going to go and prune the big apple tree in the west pasture there, that wild apple tree. It's getting really suckered up. So let's head over there. Okay, upon further review, I think I'm going to start with this first. This area needs to be cleaned out because we're we're dozing like right where the lilacs are kind of flush with the back of the barn this is going to be dozed to just a straight edge we don't really care if it caves in a little bit and then uh, concrete is going to be poured 
Oh, right about in here somewhere. So, what I gotta do is I gotta rake out all this garbage here. Unfortunately, I can't burn it. I don't wanna damage the lilacs. Even though they're gonna get damaged later, I don't wanna damage them by burning because we're gonna try to salvage the lilacs if at all possible and move them across the street. So can't burn it all and we have the the whole big ass propane tank problem. This tank is going. Um, if you're not like from out in the country you may not know that you don't own these. They're, you're renting them from the from the co-op or the whoever supplies your propane. So we're switching companies. So this tank is going and we're going to have a new tank over there somewhere. So this whole area is going to be clear. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to rake out as much of this stuff, yank it by hand, rake it, and then expose whatever is in here that I want to try to save. And then I'm going to have to transplant as fast as possible. I don't have a huge amount of time. I'm unsure on some of these. I think this is, yeah, this is, uh, hi Macy. This right here is Black Eyed Susan, uh, Rude Beckia, what I'm growing in there. Lupine, this is red columbine. Um, I didn't seed that, that just grew naturally. Generally they like a lot of shade. It may have grown here because there used to be a container right where I'm standing. The container was right up to the edge here. So it was fairly shady at the time. So maybe that's why it's here. I'd kind of like to transplant that. We got tons of red columbine on the road and stuff. So if I have time, I'll transplant that. So we got lupine there, 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 there. You know, I've been trying to multiply the lupine in here because my wife l really likes it. Well, I like it too. Um, so we got a good amount in here. Lupine hates to be transplanted, so we'll see how much of it lives. So I'm going to be raking and transplanting for the foreseeable future, and then I got to take all the stuff that I that I rake out of here pile it up over here. I'm going to take the brush whacker and whack down what's left of them brambles there. And I'm going to relight that fire and get rid of the rest of that. Then I have the fire over here and I, you know, just a ton of stuff to do today. So I better get at it. Oh, there's a, a purple cone flower right there. So I got a lot of starts right here that need to be moved. So I better get moving.
Okay, I had a big old list of stuff I was going to do today, but there is no way I can do it if I keep transplanting. I think I'm going to come back and do some more, but I can't do it all today. Like right there, that's a big Rudbeckia. There's a couple there. There's one there. There's probably, oh, if I were to guess, there's probably a dozen of the Black Eyed Susan left. And then I have some odd columbine here and there. And I think that's about it. There might be another coneflower in here, possibly two. I know there's a big Black Eyed Susan up in the corner there, but I'll, I think I'll leave it there. I want this all to bloom this summer. It's probably gonna be its best year yet. And then now I gotta, I gotta find a place for it. I gotta find a place for all that stuff too, or just till it under. I, don't, I really don't know what to do. Possible I'll just go around the side of the barn with it. But let's go take a look at where I put them out by the road. And I'm gonna get back to this probably tomorrow. Tomorrow's a sunny day as well and no track. I still have probably six more hours of daylight today so maybe seven i want to get that pile burned run this over there burn that but i gotta cut all that stubble first then i'm gonna burn that and then i gotta get the little chunk of grass where i'm gonna plant that prairie smoke i gotta get that burned today and get it either planted today or tomorrow so i'm i'm gonna switch tack right now but I'll show you what I planted first, and then I'll end this. This is all the lupine. There's probably a dozen of them or so. At least a dozen. They're kind of hard to see right now. They're pretty watered in. And then I got a bunch of black-eyed Susan. There's a couple of varieties. And not a whole lot of coneflower but there's a lot of coneflower already here that's starting to come up. So that's it for here. There's a lupine that was here, but it doesn't look too good. See this stuff right here is all coneflower. That right there, this right here, that, that. I gotta try to thin out anything that's a weed, like that's a weed right there. Can't remember the name of it. Some of this stuff has been sprayed already, so it's gonna die back. This is uh, cone flower, uh, Rudbeckia, so is this. So I will have to do a little bit of hand weeding in here. The uh, pre-emergent Hopefully that works pretty well and stops the majority of the grasses from growing in here and other annual weeds. Okay, I didn't plant anything in here, but so there's some coneflower there. Weed, weed. Coneflower. Yeah, the coneflower has kind of a purpley stem to it. So it's fairly easy, and that is a weed right there. They look similar, and I think this thing is, uh, I forget what these are called, but they got a long root, and they'll pop up, keep popping up all over. That right there is a black-eyed Susan, Rudbeckia, hollyhock. The hollyhocks just spread. We planted them before, way long time ago, and. They pop up here and there, all over the place. Yeah, see this got really infested with weeds. There is a coneflower and the entire rest of this area is weeds. Well, there's a black-eyed Susan right there, but it's weeds all around it, which it looks like they're dying back. I sprayed this with glyphosate before any of the perennials came up. So I may have killed 
one or two of the perennials, but I don't think so. There's a lupine. See, there's seedlings all over the place. I'm hoping from my knowledge of the pre-emergent, it doesn't allow this, it'll allow the seedlings to sprout, but it messes with their ability to make roots. So they fairly quickly die back. At least that's what I understand. Hopefully it's true. And then in the little blue stem garden, these are, I think I have all Rudbeckia in here, just in the openings. Um, and I will, I'll be getting a lot more stuff in here. It's kind of hard to tell where the actual grass is, but there's clumps here and there. And there's pretty much zero roots in between the clumps of grass. So you just spread the grass apart. It's not like a, a mat forming grass like bluegrass and some of the fescues and stuff. The roots on this grow about six feet deep. Just big roots that go way down. Hi kitty. So the empty spaces between the plants, between the grasses, I'm going to plant either wildflowers or other types of grass. I want to get some Indian grass in here as well. And I'm trying to... Oh, this cat. She stands on my foot so I can't move. Thinking she's got me trapped. Hi, kitty. I got this, uh, this other grass invading a little bit. You know, I don't know exactly how well this will naturalize. If, if any of this uh, other grass can grow inside here, just don't have enough experience with it yet, but I hope not. You know, I want a pure stand of, of native grass and I've seen it before, so hopefully that's the way it'll end up. Okay, this is next right here. Got a little bit of a breeze going, so uh, my wife took down the fence. So what I'm going to do is try burning that away into the wind. And I'm going to try to get whatever I can burned on this. And I killed, I killed an area of crown vetch. We have crown vetch growing over the edge over here. And I killed an area of that. But it all, it's all died back right now. It hasn't came out yet again this spring. So I may burn this as well. And burn as much as possible. And then this ground is really nice and loose. So I'm not going to even need to take the tiller to it. I'm just going to take the hard tine rake. And I'm going to start right at that point right there. And do, oh, maybe right back to here. And I'm going to plant prairie smoke seeds so that'll be the next video I gotta finish this one up it's getting too long so if you want to see that video make sure you subscribe and click on the like button and the update button so you're notified when I post it thanks for watching and have a great day